Hi people! In this video, we will look over the dungeon tier 0.5, which will become available at phase 5 release. We will look at how good it is, how it looks, what you need to do in order to progress through the quest chain that rewards you with the tier 0.5 pieces, and how much it will cost you in materials and gold to do so. There will be many parts to this video, and unless you are curious about the tier sets for all classes, I'd recommend using the timestamps in the description below. With this said, let's get started. First off, if you are a raider, tier 0.5 is not that good. If you are only after bis pieces, you won't find them here. There is maybe one exception to this, which is the 4 piece of the rogue's dark mantle sets. The chance on melee attacks to restore 35 energy is apparently pretty good from what I've heard. However, some of the set bonuses for tier 0.5 could actually be pretty good, at least in dungeons. We'll look closer at such things shortly in the tier 0.5 section of this video. The main reason as of why you would want to do this is partly because of the journey that it is to obtain your set, also because the upgraded dungeon tier looks really good, and that it is somewhat of a feat of strength to not only have collected all of your tier 0 gear, but then have gone through the entire tier 0.5 quest chain. You will also unlock a whole set of new dungeon bosses, and therefore new and quite strong gear once you've finished your chain. Some of the bosses will have been killed earlier as a part of your quest chain, and some of them won't. To a small degree, you will be able to find very strong gear on these bosses, even for raiders. For example, Scepter of Interminable Focus, a caster offhand, giving 9 spell power, 1% spell hit, and 1% spell crit. This will likely not be replaced until the Twin Emperors in AQ40. Totem of Rebirth, a totem reducing the cooldown of your rebirth by 10 minutes. The Rune Band of Wizardry, a ring with 1% spell hit, 16 spell power, and 7 stamina. Idol of Rejuvenation, an idol increasing the healing done by your rejuvenation spell by up to 50. It is the best in slot healing idol for rejuvenation healing, and the best in slot restoration druid idol until the idol of life from AQ40. There are many more items which will become accessible through this quest chain, but these are the most interesting ones. So it could be useful having a few people in the guild completing their quest chain just to be able to summon these bosses. Perhaps you could sell boss summoning services as well? You will of course need your full tier 0 gear to complete the tier 0.5 quest chain. In total you will need 220 raw gold for the quest and quest items bought of NPCs. As for materials that can be bought, they are the following. 4 Greater Eternal Essences, 1 Delicate Arcanite Converter, 10 Stone Scale Oil, 3 Dark Iron Bar, 3 Moon Cloths, 20 Enchanted Leather, 4 Cured Rugged Hide, 8 Large Brilliant Shards, 4 Dark Runes, and a Flask of Supreme Power. In total, with current auction house prices as of this video's making, this would cost 460 gold in total. So, close to 700 gold, combining material costs with raw gold costs. You will also need to have honored reputation with Argent Dawn, and at least know someone who is at friendly reputation with Scenarian Circle. Before going into each class set specifically, I'll go over the things all sets have in common. All chests, drops of General Drakisath in UBRS. All heads, drops of Dark Master Gandling in Skolomans. All legs, drops from Baron Riven there in Stratham Undead. On top of that, gloves, belts and bracers are BOEs for all classes and can therefore be bought on the auction house. Normally, I would recommend waiting with buying the BOEs until you have all the other pieces, 
as the BOEs might drop along the way. But perhaps people are gonna start charging higher prices for the BOEs, as they will likely increase in demand. I suppose you'll have to decide for yourself what the smartest thing to do is. With that said, we're moving on to the specific classes. Feel free to use the timestamps in the description to skip to your class. Boots drop off Nerubin Khan in Stratholm Undead. Shoulders from Overlord Wernthalak in LBRS. The belt drops off Trash in Blackrock Spire, that's both upper and lower. Bracers drops off Trash in Blackrock Spire and Stratholm. And the gloves drops off Warmaster Voon in LBRS. They are still binds unequipped, however. Boots drops off Heartsinger Forreston in Strath Live. Shoulders drops off Gas Thrust Whisperer in Skolomance. The belt drops off Trash in Blackrock Spire, Stratholm and Skolomance. The bindings drops from Lower Blackrock Spire and the gloves drops from Dr. Theolan Krastanov in Skolomance. The boots drops from Mother Smolderweb in LBRS. The shoulders drops from Gisrael the Slavener in LBRS. The belt drops from Trash in Blackrock Spire and Skolomance. The bracers drops from Trash in Skolomance and Strath Living. Gloves drops from The Unforgiven in Stratham Living. Boots drops from Curthanus the Herald and Skolomance. Shoulders drops from Rend in UBRS. The belt drops from Trash in LBRS and Stratholm. The bracers drops from Trash in LBRS. The gloves drops from Ramstein the Gorger in Stratholm. Boots drops from Maleki the Pallid in Stratholm Undead. Shoulders drops from Solakar Flamewrath in UBRS. Belt drops from the Trash in Blackrock Spire. Bracers drops from Stratholm Live, and the gloves drops from Archivist Gelford in Stratholm Live. Boots drops of Baroness Anastari in Stratholm Undead. Shoulders from Jandis Barrow in Skolomans. The belt drops from Trash in Stratholm and Skolomans. The bracers drops from Trash in Blackrock Spire and Skolomans. And the gloves drops from Trash in Skolomans. The boots drops from Belnasar in Strath Live. The shoulders drops from the Beast in UBRS. The belt drops from Trash in Stratholm. The bracers drops from Trash in Skolomans. And the gloves drops from Timmy the Cruel and Strat Live. The boots drops from Bradlgor and Skolomans. The shoulders drops from Cannon Master Wily and Strat Live. The belt drops from Trash in Blackrock Spire. The bracers drops from Trash in Skolomans. And the gloves drops from Shadow Hunter Wushkayin in LBRS. The boots drops from High Lord Omak in LBRS. Shoulders drops from Gith in UBRS, and the belt drops from Trash in BRS. Bracers drops from Trash in Stratholm, and the gloves drops from Pyro God Emberseer in UBRS. And with that, we are finally done with the 9 classes. As you can see, all gear is gathered from 4 dungeons, Skolo, Stratholm, LBRS and UBRS. Before moving on to the quest chain, let's have a look at each class tier 0.5. You probably want to know what you might be working towards. Something which is quite important is that the set bonuses for tier 0.5 are the tier 0 bonuses in reversed order. What was the set bonus for 2 pieces of tier 0 is the set bonus of 8 pieces of tier 0.5. Anyway, let's take a look at each set individually. The set's special thing is the increase in your pet's armor, crit, damage done and maximum health. The chance on hit to restore 200 mana is now also a 4 piece set bonus. I suppose that this gear could be very good for solo grinding mobs in the open world. The set looks good and might not be too useless in PvP due to the 4 piece set bonus. I suppose PvP gear would outweigh it by far, however. This set looks really nice. The 4 piece set bonus seems to have a 2% chance per hit to proc and might not be too bad while tanking dungeons.
Looking like a more polished tier 0 set, any warrior that has ever gone for a self-heal build are probably interested in this, as the self-heal is now a 4 piece set bonus. Also, the boots are actually quite good, meanwhile the chromatic boots are better, they also require you to obtain chromatic boots. The chest isn't too bad either as far as I've understood. The aesthetics of this set are sadly not as impressive as for some of the other sets. The chance to proc the shield while struck in combat seems to be 2%. I don't know whether it has an internal cooldown or not. There are two parts of this set that might be quite good. The head and gloves, both with spell power and spell hit. The 4 piece set bonus seems to have a 2% chance to proc. Having an interesting design, the 4 piece bonus seems to have a 2% chance to proc. The 4 piece set bonus actually makes this quite strong in PV, as from what I've heard. I'm not too sure how it will work, as I don't even have a rogue, but I'm sure rogue players will know more about this proc than I do. A real meme set for the meme elemental enhancement shaman. The 4 piece set bonus seems to be at a 4% proc chance. Anyway, with these sets out of the way, we will now move on onto the quest chain. Horde players needs to speak to Mokvar in the throne room in Ogrimmar, and Alliance players speak to Deliana in the throne room in Ironforge. Horde is then to head over to Winterspring to gather 15 Winterspring blood samples of any frost sabers or bears within the zone. Alliances head over to Silithus to collect 15 Silithus venom samples from any spiders or scorpions in the zone. Once you have your materials, you head back to Mokvar or Deliana and turn in the quest items together with 20 gold and the tier 0 wrists and you will be rewarded with the tier 0.5 wrists. For the second quest, both Horde and Alliance players are sent off to Gadgetson to talk to Muck's Mana Scrambler. From here on, both Horde and Alliance players will basically be doing the same quest for the rest of the quest chain. For this quest, you will need to head over to Burning Steps and collect Volcanic Ash, which is gathered from piles on the ground. Once you have all the ash, return to Mox in Gadgetson and grab the following things from your bank. The Arcanite Converter, 4 Greater Eternal Essences, 10 Stone Scale Oils, and turn that all in together with 40 gold. Completing this quest rewards you with Mox quality goods, a bag containing the Ectoplasmic Distiller, 8 Goblin Rocket Fuels, 6 Easy Throw Dynamites number 2, and 1 Discombulator Ray. Afterwards, make sure to pick up the extra goblin rocket fuel from the bank in Gadgetson for the common quest. Players are now sent to gather three different types of ectoplasm. Twelve of the scorched ones from the tortured sentinels and druids in Selethus, twelve frozen ones from the anguished and suffering highborns in Winterspring, and finally twelve stable ectoplasms from the spectral marauders and corpse in the eastern plagelands. In order to obtain these ectoplasms, you must activate your ectoplasmic distiller by placing it on the ground. This requires one goblin rocket fuel, and the distiller will be active for 5 minutes. You now need to kill mobs within 20 yards of the distiller with at least 3 seconds between each kill. Doing so will give you one ectoplasm. Whether you can gather several ectoplasms from one mob if you for example do this quest as a group and place all the distillers at one spot, is unknown. You might not need all your fuel, but if you have bad luck you might need more. It is probably better to have too much than too little for this quest, to avoid having to get back to a capital. Before leaving Winterspring, make sure to run down to Dark Whisper Gorge in the far south and find the imp VL, who sells you an item needed for quest 6, the elemental rod. By grabbing it now, you will save an entire trip from Gadetson to Winterspring and back. Apparently, the rod will be available even if you don't have the quest for it. Once you have all the ectoplasm, you return to Mux in Gadgetson again. 
This quest sends the player to the Burning Steps again. This time you are to collect the Magma Core from Magma Lord Bok. He is a non-elite and apparently rather easy to kill. Once obtained, return to Mox. This time you are sent to Winterspring to purchase an elemental rod from the Imp Veal. He is the demon merchant in the far south. The rod costs 40 gold or 50 gold, it's not entirely clear. He is apparently a shifty dealer and will alter his prices from time to time. Let's hope this item does not have a limited stock. Hopefully, you bought this during Quest 4 when you were already in Winterspring collecting ectoplasms. Once bought, return back to Mux. With this quest, you're done with Mux of Gadgetson, and you are now to return to Mokvar or Deliana to deliver the extra dimensional Ghost Revealer. Bringing your tier 0 belt and gloves to Mokvar or Deliana, you are now rewarded with your tier 0.5 belt and glove. At this stage, the quests will soon start to require dungeon clears. Before heading for quest 9, make sure to grab the following out of your bank. 3 Dark Iron Bar, 20 Enchanted Leather, 3 Moon Cloths, 4 Cured Rugged Hide, 8 Large Brilliant Shards, and 4 Dark Runes. Deliana or Mokvar will now send you off to find Antonion Harmon, who is an undead over by the Stratlive main entrance, walking around on the bridge. He is outside, however, don't enter the instance as you can't leave without spirit dressing or heartstoning. Use your extra dimensional ghost revealer to reveal Anthonium. With phase 5, a captured NPC, Yusida Harmon, will be added to the Stratholm Undead dungeon, located inside Baron Rivendare's room. Whenever you open the inner gate in Stratholm Undead, a timer of 45 minutes will begin. Once that timer is up, Baron will execute Yusida. For this quest, Anthonion requires you to save Yusida and thus clear Stratholm Undead in less than 45 minutes. If you manage this, you will be rewarded with Yusida's Satchel, a bag containing some major mana and health potions, as well as some elixirs. Yusida will now ask you to return to Antheon with her locket as a proof of her living. Once back at Antheon, he will now require some of the materials we grabbed from the bank earlier. Turning in the dark iron bars, enchanted leather, moon cloth and cured rugged hides to him, he will reward you with the incomplete banner of provocation. You will now be sent off to the library in Dyrmal. The easiest way there is the northern dungeon. You don't have to kill any mobs if you know how to run. You will require the crescent key to enter the library. While inside the library, you will find Falrin Tree Shaper, who will give you your next quest. You are now required to collect 25 ogre war beads from any ogres in Dire Mall or Black Rock Spire. Once done, you return to Falrin. Completing this quest will allow you to choose between two necklaces. One giving 7 stamina, 24 attack power and 1% hit. And the other one giving 12 intellect, 7 stamina and 13 spell power. For this quest, you are required to bring Falrind 1 Jeering Spectre's Essence as well as 8 Large Brilliant Shards and 4 Dark Runes. The Essence drops of any ghosts inside Darmal West. Once obtained, return to Falrin. Once accepted, you are given the Banner of Provocation. With this item, you are asked to head over to the arena inside Blackrock Depths to summon and defeat Theljon. Make sure to use the banner before the event starts, meaning no one steps in the circle in the middle. Theljon drops the top piece of Lord Valfalak's amulet, which you are to return to Anthonion outside of Stratholm Live. Accepting this quest returns you to Mokvar or Deliana, where you are now to turn in your tier 0 boots pants and shoulders to obtain the tier 0.5 version of those pieces. You're now done with the Anthonion part of this chain. You are now required to meet another ghost, Bodli, who sits just outside the entrance to Blackrock Spire. You will need the extra dimensional ghost revealer to see him. You are now required to gather three different items dropped off fire bosses. 
The first one, the An Incendite of Incendius, Drops of Lord Incendius in Blackrock Depths. The Ember of the Ember Seer from Pyrogod Ember Seer in UBRS. And finally, the Cinder of Cinders from the Duke of Cinders, who is a summon boss in Selethus. In order to summon him, you must be friendly with Scenarion Circle, have the Twilight Cultist set, the Twilight Cultist Medallion of Station, and preferably the Signet of Beckoning Fire. You will also need to obtain the Hallowed Bracer, which is bought from the Argenton Quartermaster for 120 gold. You also have to be honored with Argenton to buy it. Once you have all of this, return to Bodley. There are actually four random quests that you can be given here. It is fully random which of the quests you will be given and does not matter which race or class you play. All of them requires you to head to some part of the world and kill elites to obtain one of the following item. Starbreeze Village Relic from the Ice Giants in Frostwhisper Gorge. Druidical Remains from Hyrogal Ambushers in Silithus. Soul Ashes of the Banished from the Cursed Justicar or Writhing Mage on the Purgation Isle in Hillspread Foothills. The Brilliant Sword of Seolothri from the Scarlet Praetorian in Turris Hand in Eastern Plagelands. Turning in whichever quest you were given will unlock the next part of the Shade. Just like the previous quest, there are four different versions of this quest and whichever you will be given is random. The quest will provide you with the Bracer of Beckoning, which is a boss-specific item to summon said boss. You can get any one of these four bracers. Jaren and Sothos in Strath Live, which are summoned in Balnasar's room. Cormac and Skolomans, summoned in the Alchemy Table Room by the boss Rast Frostwhisperer. More Greyhoof in LBRS, summoned in Warmaster Voon's room and Iselian in Darmal East, summon in the arena of the final boss Alsen Worldshaper. No matter which of these bosses you kill, you will obtain the left piece of the amulets, but you still have to kill your specific boss however to complete the quest. Once finished, return to Boodley for the next part. For this quest, you are required to gather 20 blood kelps of the elite Nagas on the Alcas island. Once done, return to Boodley once again. Now comes quest 20 in repeat. You're now required to gather another one of the items mentioned for quest 20. This time, however, you are rewarded with 3 blood kelp elixirs of dodging, increasing your dodge by 3% for 30 minutes, and 3 blood kelp elixirs of resistance, increasing your resistance towards all schools of magic by 15 for 30 minutes. I haven't been able to find out whether this is a once and classic reward, or if you might be able to repeat this quest to have these potions and elixirs for all raids. Either way, once you have obtained your item, return to Bodley. For the right half of the amulet, you are essentially doing the quest for the left part again. You are randomly given one of the four bracers, taking you to either Skolomans, Stratholm, LBRS or Darmol East. Once you've defeated the summoned boss, return to Bodley. And make sure to bring your flask of supreme power. You will now need to do a LBRS or UBRS run to obtain 40 Blackrock Brazers, which are dropped off the orcs inside Blackrock Spire. It is a good idea to clear your way to the beast inside UBRS while gathering the Brazers as you will need to summon a boss inside the beast's room for the next quest. You will also need a flask of supreme power for this quest. Once you have the items, return to Bodley. You are now given the Brazier of Beckoning, which you will use to summon Lord Valthalak in UBRS. Like mentioned before, he is summoned inside the beast's room in UBRS. So, if you already cleared your way there for the previous quest, you will have an easy time getting there at least. Lord Valthalak can be a bit tricky and I suggest looking up a guide for him. If I have made one, I will make sure to have the link to that video posted in the description of this video. Once killed, the spirit of Valthalak will spawn, where you turn in this quest.
The spirit will ask you to return to Bodli, who will reward you with a bracer of invocation. This item can summon any of the dungeon bosses mentioned here, meaning Greyhoof, Valthalak, Iselian, Sothos Egerian, and Cormac. The item is also permanent. Talking to Bodli again, he gives you a quest that sends you back to Mokvar in Ogumar or Deliana in Ironforge. Boldly says that he is sad that you are leaving, but that you are free to come back and visit him anytime. Turning in Tier Zero head and chest to Mokvar or Deliana, you will finally receive the last two pieces of Tier 0.5. What an epic, strange journey it has been. So, this was a pretty long video, just writing the script took 5 hours. I hoped you enjoyed this and found it helpful, and I hope that you are as excited as I am to undertake this journey. If you noticed anything that I missed or was wrong about, please let me know in a comment below. If you have any questions or want to say hi, I stream over at twitch.tv slash clouds. With all this said, like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more. This was all from me right now. I'll be back soon with another video. Until then, see ya!